Hello? Linda! What? Can we go like next week? As literally next week? Yeah! <gasps> I'm pretty sure the answer is week. <laughs> <laughs> This video was sponsored by Sandland. Packing for Paris! This was probably one of the most spontaneous things I've ever done. I remember it just being a random Tuesday. I was writing lecture notes, eating oatmeal, and I get a call from my friend, and the next thing you know. Good morning! Let's go to Paris! The non-refundable tickets are booked, our tiny carry-ons are crammed to the brim, the cheapest Airbnb in the least sketchiest area is ours, and every hour of every day is spent yelping restaurants. A girl's trip to Paris. Man, even saying that sounds so surreal. You know when people ask you how old you are and you have like a moment where your mind goes completely blank? Wait, how old am oh. I again? Mm. Last meal at home. Hi, mommy. I swear just yesterday I was counting up my tips after work for my town's little Chinese delivery restaurant. Two days ago I was sitting on the floor in my high school alone because I didn't have any friends. Literally, I still feel 16 years old dreaming about a trip like this. Oh, no rush, you drive safe. Hi, mommy. It's starting! Let the adventure begin! I don't care. Really off to. I mean, yeah, tell everyone where I live. <laughs> We're about to eat something very yummy. It's just with a P, ends with an L. X, ends with an X. P, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> X. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a good start. Traffic was slightly concerning. Laughing, crying a little. We were like, this is technically the entire ride. <laughs> we had a little bit of a road race. This was a triggering moment. Oh. My least favorite part. Oh. <laughs> So growing up, I was really lucky to have been able to travel with my parents, so I've had my fair share of airplane food encounters, and I don't know what it is about the smell or the look or the idea of it that makes me queasy, but the foodie within me is still always so excited when the food cart comes around, and I will always eat the dessert, and then my mom's too. So while the chicken orzo was a zero out of 10, the bread and the brownie made for a very yummy night snack while we watched 2125, which is one of Cindy's favorite K-dramas. I was skeptical about the title 2125, but it was actually really cute. Speaking of being 20, I don't know, it's an awkward, overwhelming age to be. We're too old for this, too young for that. We're kind of starting to figure out what we like, and then we decide, you know, we hate it. We know so much more, but also nothing at all. We're all going through it, but we're also all a little lonely at the same time. But I think nothing ruins your 20s or 30s or 40s more than thinking you should have your life figured out already. None of it is meant to look a certain way or be compared to anyone else's. And this is probably setting a terrible example, but you know, you have your whole life to stress and worry about bills and jobs and relationships and whatnot, but not everyone can be in their 20s. So design, create, try this and that and move on and travel and just do it. Just do it. Anyways, our first stop after landing in Paris was... Bruh. This is Sayoon, just a favorite human of mine and one of Cindy's oldest, bestest friends who's been studying abroad in Spain. Why do you guys giggle? Do you know him or something? He's like, she's just like, isn't he so good? Like, <laughs> so what do three hungry girls do on their first day in Paris? Obviously, eat udon. I know what you're thinking. Udon, really, Linda? You're in Paris and be better than that. Now, before you judge me any harder, you have to understand this was not just udon, okay? This place doesn't just serve you noodles. They transport you to Japan. This was the most perfect masterpiece in a bowl, the textures and undertones of different flavors and all the garnishes. Oh my god, I will remember this place for the rest of my life. Remember, you will never regret getting it done. Good God, all of us. so good. Bon appetit! Yellow in the blue! I don't know, it's really gross. 
Now, as a bunch of university students, we did choose to call a two-star, $20 a night each Airbnb our home because, you know, that's part of the Paris experience. Hey! Bonjour! <laughs> Uh, world's tiniest elevator. Oh my god, it just like flashed. Oh my god. Oh wait, you guys are really tight. leaving me here alone? Okay, we're gonna be okay. Bye. 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 And we were actually pleasantly surprised when we walked in. Little did they know this feeling was not gonna last long. We'll circle back to this later. Oh, it's nice! This is so cute! This is so much better than I thought. Oh my god, it's so clean. And we have a tea. What's home sweet home in French? Hi, this is present day Linda, and I'm currently packing for my next travel adventure. And I'm popping in to say, other than not eating enough croissants, the only other thing I didn't like about my trip was that it really messed up my brain. Like my body's natural sleep rhythm was horrendous for like two months after my trip. And then my dad actually recommended Sandland because he travels a lot, a lot, a lot for work. And I just could not recommend this more if you struggle with sleep, staying asleep, or if you just want to get better quality sleep. Sandland's like this all natural daily sleep supplement, and they focus on two key stages of sleep, the falling asleep part and the staying asleep part. And there's no side effects the next day, no grogginess or fogginess. Personally, I'm pretty skeptical when it comes to sleep medication, but Sandlane uses ingredients that naturally reduce your stress and anxiety to help calm your senses, to help people retrain their bodies to sleep naturally again. Anyways, from a girl that never used to sleep, I'm a true believer that the better quality of your sleep, the better quality of your life. Thank you, Sandlane, for helping me sleep like a baby. I will definitely be bringing you on my travel adventures. And also, thank you for sponsoring today's video. You can visit the link in my description to shop Sandland on Amazon and you can use my code LINDASUN15 for 15% off. Okay, let's go back to Paris. First, it was time to explore. We hit up some thrift stores and a cute little coffee shop that had these adorable hanging chairs. No Francais. Yeah. <laughs> we, we got a latte and a CBD cookie to share. Now, if you didn't know, CBD is a chemical compound found in cannabis. And I thought CBD just stood for something else, like chocolate brown deliciousness. I don't know. But no, I was later informed we indeed had a weed cookie and it was really yummy. Because everyone around us is speaking French, we obviously went on a hunt for French onion soup. So after carefully yelping for three hours, we found the perfect restaurant. And then we arrived and they actually gave us the very upsetting news that they did not sell it anymore. And then they made us pay $10 for a bottle of water we didn't even drink. I was a little triggered, but everything happens for a reason because we ended up not having French onion soup and instead the best burrata of my life. Oh my God, and that's going for it spontaneous which by the way is so not me i like being organized and planned and i've always prioritized school and work and achieving over living over everything but as i've gotten older and wiser i'm starting to see prioritizing living as an achievement i don't know nothing really makes sense now but nothing really made sense before either and now I'm in Paris with my favorite people, filming myself eat some delicious pesto gnocchi, and everything is more than okay. So I don't think it's supposed to make sense ever. And I kind of love that it doesn't. So our problem is we have to start calling. Airbnb, toilet flooding, shower flooding, every sink flooding. After we all successfully entered our food commas, we were planning on going back to the Airbnb to watch Ratatouille. And we had to postpone that because the entire Airbnb decided to start physically breaking down. The sink started leaking, the shower was clogged, the floor was just a puddle of dirty, yucky water. Water. The owner came in at 12 a.m. and started plunging the toilet and screaming at us in a mix of English and French and none of us had slept in 40 hours. We were really extremely grumpy and well, you know, we wanted the two-star Airbnb experience. What we needed was just a real bed in a place that wasn't flooding. Okay, goodbye. This <laughs> chaos. I'm wearing four layers. <laughs> First day in Paris. The noise of the gurgling. Splash, splash. I'm going to be in a better place. And so we proceeded to call every single hotel, 60 hotels, and found this one that was owned by a French-speaking Dracula and smelled strongly of pee. I don't know, maybe we were all delirious due to lack of sleep, but we were terrified he was gonna eat us or something. He's so... He looks like a Dracula. You're safe. For now. For now. You should need to go to bed. But we can't. I'm like scared. <laughs> Vampire's coming. But we also needed help turning the sofa into a bed. And so we ended up having no choice but to welcome French Dracula into our room at 2 a.m. All right. <laughs> Sorry, we have no idea. I also, also like you, no idea, but I will try my best. Oh, maybe now? Of course you know. Oh. That's interesting, I've never oh. seen that. So I give the rest with you? Thank you. Okay? Thank you very much. Yo, Kai was kind of nice. <laughs> he was such a sweetie. Yeah, Let's say sorry. So 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. I take yeah, it back. It's freaking 3 a.m. in the morning. The lessons learned today. CBD cookies are delicious. Some things aren't meant to work out, so other things can. And don't judge the slightly creepy Dracula-looking concierge before you let him into your hotel room at 2 a.m. You could end up making a new friend. Or he could end up actually being creepy. It's really a coin toss with that one. I feel like it's the perfect weather. It's like kind of chilly. Today's agenda, do all the basic, wonderful, touristy things one does when visiting Paris. So we set off on a mission to find French onion soup, take two. I first stuffed myself with lots of baguette. Can we just take a minute to appreciate that every single restaurant here serves as a huge basket of delicious baguettes before every meal? Now, as a first time French onion souper, this isn't just any soup, okay? It was more melted cheese with a small side of soup. Like we're talking three pounds of cheese. And there are beautiful caramelized onions and toasted soup soaked bread. Basically, it's it's just like a warm hug for my insides. Mm. I'm in absolutely no position to critique art, and most times I don't really know what I'm looking at, but you know, beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. Paris is not everyone's cup of tea, but I kind of like this tea. I feel like everything is a little bit more magical here. Maybe it's the architecture, or that there are dozens of cafes around every corner, or that you feel like you're a character in a romance movie. Maybe it's catching snippets of conversations in French, or the $7 lattes. Or maybe the magic isn't how easy it is to romanticize simple pieces of bread. Or maybe it has nothing to do with Paris at all. Maybe you feel the magical love because you go to Paris with people you love. Because you wake up in a city so unexplored, so far away from the stress of real life, because the people around you are in love with each other and in love with Paris. Traveling and seeing new places with so many people living completely different lives always yeah. wakes me up. I'm really, really good at getting stuck in my head. I've spent a lot of time worrying about and living in the past and the future. I'm not that good at actually living life, but I really only get this one life. I don't want to waste it worrying about it. Just like I have this one body, I don't want to spend all my time with it, hating it and changing it. There's so much beauty in the world. I don't want to stay so stuck in my head that I miss it. Dinner tonight was at L'Entrecote de Paris for steak and fries. And this came highly recommended by Seyun, and she is a tough lady to please, so my expectations were pretty high. And you know it's gonna be good when the restaurant literally only serves one thing, and the only options you have are how you want your steak cooked and how many more servings of fries you want. <laughs> It's almost like cleans my nostrils. Dude, it hurts a little. And while the steak was obviously insane, the real winners of the night were the incredibly rich, savory, melty, beautiful sauce that coated the entire plate and the huge mountain of bottomless, crispy, golden yellow fries. I actually ate until I physically couldn't fit another fry into my body, and I will be dreaming about them until next time. My legs shaking, savoring every bite. Usually I travel to search for something escape, food, new beginnings, peace, nostalgia, adventure, love. Sometimes I find what I'm looking for. A moment of clarity, the most delicious pastry, a really good conversation, a new love for a new place. But the love and happiness and peace you find on a trip kind of disappears when you come home. So as cliche as this sounds, I've been working on being the love I've been looking for. Finding it in myself, the way I live my life, the things I fill my days with, all the amazing things my body can do. Because I can travel farther and see more and immerse myself Myself in every culture and taste the entire world, meet the coolest people with the most incredible stories, and yet I still may never meet myself. I may never feel whole, but what I've always searched for to feel whole has always been with me, not a plane right away. But it actually hurts so bad, like it's like paralyzing. Oh, it also feels like the Good morning! Paris okay. day! We're just cool! Boulangerie! Oh, 
On our last full day in Paris, we decided to have a cute little picnic by the water. So we collected our croissants and baked goods and baguettes and cheese and jam and snacks and basically all my favorite things. And took 5,000 pictures and absolutely demolished every last bite of this spread. And I know it's so simple, but I think my favorite part of this trip was just sitting on this dirty gravel road beside a really murky and dirty canal with my friends talking about life and filling our bellies with all the baguette and brie and apricot jam we could. Oh, this combo will forever and always hold a special place in my heart. I was like, it would be cute if we... Oh. She's perfect. Apricot <laughs> jam, boursin, baguette, brie. How did we try it? Under. Pure happiness. We spent our last few moments in Paris doing more Paris things, you know, shopping, eating snails, more shopping. And I did spend a little too much money, but say Patty, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now that I'm looking back on all the footage, my favorite parts were the little moments. I mean, aren't they always? A solid 7 out of 10. I think Paris is Paris because the little mundane everyday things are romanticized. Rain. Here, gray, cold, and slimy becomes an aesthetic. Walking. Here, it's not just a mode of transportation. It's sightseeing, exploring, people watching, coffee. Not just a cup of energy, but it becomes a full-on experience. You know, sitting with your little cappuccino on a terrace in one of those cute little chairs with jazz music lightly playing in the background. Moral of the story, you don't have to go to Paris to feel in love with life. Or to have a picnic with your friends. To spend a day at a museum wandering aimlessly. To dress up like a princess and take pretty pictures. To eat baguette, brie, and apricot jam. I think I'm learning that a big part of being happy is learning to be happy for everything. Yes, traveling and celebrations and nights out, but also nights in. The sunny days and cozy rainy ones too. Fridays and Mondays and Wednesdays. Beginnings and endings. Falling in love unexpectedly with a person, a place, a new drink or food combination, a new Netflix show, a new album. Basically embrace and romanticize it all. We can all have our own little versions of Paris. God, what if I just... I love Good water. Mm, carry good water. Best water in my life. Mm. Hey, that's a nice one. Oh my god. That's a nice No. People do that? People do everything in coffee. Try. It's still good. It can't not be good. I tell you to like jump up with this. Do people do that? Try it. Not good. So good. so good. So good. So the plan originally was to not buy anything, and then these two convinced me otherwise, and I spent a little way too much money. Evil. But life is short. You gotta live. And it looks amazing. And because I was dead serious when I said this udon was life-changing. It just didn't feel right for my last meal to be anything else. And it was somehow even better than the first time. That's ridiculous. And after getting every last drop, it was time to say au revoir. Au revoir Thank you for having us. So dear Perry, no matter how wonderful our little moment was, how many delicious memories were made, how much joy you brought me, no matter how much I want us to last, for this moment to be never ending, that's just all we were meant to have. A moment. It's like that quote says, sometimes the best thing to do when you love someone is let them go. Thank <laughs> you.